This is Jermaine reporting for the Pound for Pound Boxing Show. I'm joined alongside Pierce O'Leary. How are you doing, champ? I'm good, Jermaine. I'm good. All good. Hope you're well. Brilliant. I'm very well. Very well. Thanks for taking the time to join me today. It's always a pleasure. Oh, thank you for the opportunity. Means a lot. So, Pierce, uh, first of all, I want to say congratulations. Uh, last week, fantastic, sensational knockout win uh, in your fight on the MTK Global Show in Bolton Friday night. Uh, how did it feel to get the stoppage in the Fatic style like that? Uh, do you know what? Um, it felt amazing to be honest with you. It was a bit. It felt a bit weird at the start, um, because this camp has been so long and stuff like that. And I, even when I was getting prepared for the fight, like that night, getting hands wrapped, like it felt so weird. Everything was all, all weird about it, and it was just like. Um, so I was just going in there. I just, just I got in just to be my best, just to perform my best as as I was inspired and stuff like that. And as soon as we done that, then. Um, then I got the, I got the KO and it was a lovely shot and the feeling then I got after it then it, the, the moment of it didn't even feel real because it was so clean and so so perfect when I got back to the hotel the reception sitting there with the rest of the team then we watched all over and stuff like that then that's when the buzz kicked in and I was like oh yeah yeah that was nice <laughs> absolute fantastic shot uh <laughs> We walked straight into a flush bang. You just knew once it landed, it was game. It was night. It was good night. It was an absolutely fantastic shot. Yeah, like I sized them up there because what I done was I missed a few right hands, sizing them up, and I knew what he was. I knew what he was trying to do as soon as he missed the right hand. So I felt him missing with the right hand, letting him know I was I was gonna miss, and then went letting him come in. Then the kid tried counter punch me, where I caught him as I caught him clean coming in. Yeah, it's a fantastic shot and a fantastic way to uh, to cap, cap your cap your win. Uh, I want to ask you, how did it feel? Obviously, this is the first one of the first couple of shows now that we've had small crowds slowly come back into venues. How did it feel to fight in front of a small crowd for the first time in a while? A lot of people actually asked me that question. Uh, it didn't feel there was no difference for me. Like I was very lucky to fight twice in the pandemic, uh, once in Wakefield and once in the arena where I fought last time. Previous of the of Friday night show, um, that was Bolton Bolton Wonder Stadium, um, we fought there and there was no crowds. But I don't know whether I'm so used to it as an amateur and stuff like that. Like even as an amateur, I always had good crowds. I don't know what it is. It may be just that I'm so tunnel vision. I like even if there's like there like you don't know those crowds and roaring and shouting, but I couldn't hear them. I could always hear me corner. Even when I made my debut, it was stacked like a stacked bank. And, uh, the venue was jammed; like you couldn't fit any more in it. Like, and then um, I, I couldn't hear them. I could only hear the the corner man. It was just so weird. And having when I was fighting, there were no fans. There was no difference at all. Like, and then when I fought there and again, there's still no difference. It was like that's it's just so weird. It is. It's it's hard. It's actually very hard. Um, to try to try explain to be honest with you. Yeah, some people, some fans. Obviously, it's good to have some small crowds back in. Obviously, some some fighters can adapt different to it. Uh, some fighters can uh, get used to it. Obviously, fight with no crowds. Some some fighters are used to it. Obviously, they've been on an amateur background for a long, long time, or just come through the pros and they've been smarting and fight fighting in front of no crowds whatsoever. So some fighters could be, be used to it. Some fighters might not be used to it. Yeah, well, look, since I made me, since I torn pro, uh, I made my debut. I'll be fighting with fans, stacked fans. So um, only uh, the only time was was the pandemic, and that was only two fights without fans. So there was no really difference to be honest with you. Um, it'd be more so like fighting away in the European Championships, maybe abroad where there's not many fans there. And um, yeah, there's, as as an amateur, I, I fought all over Europe, and in the European Championships, there's not many massive fans there. There's only all teams, so. There's no fans, so when when you're fighting, there's no one shouting for you. What your team? Do you get me? So the team is more like your coaches in the corner. So Pierce, I want to talk a bit. Obviously, you mentioned a bit about uh, your amateur career, but I want to, obviously you're seven and zero now. I moved to seven and zero. I want to ask you though, where did you where did your boxing career first begin? Um, in Dublin, where I'm from. Um, right, the the boxing gym is probably only it's probably less than two hundred meters from your home. Um. 
in the community. It's a great community and stuff like that. But I tried every other sport and boxing was the one that just, I don't know whether boxing chose me. But I tried everything I didn't like and as soon as I went in and I, I loved it. That was it. I just clicked with us straight away at the age of seven. And uh, you never looked back. Never looked back since. Never looked back since. Never. I used to have to lie about my age. <laughs> <laughs> Pierce, uh, so who's your inspiration growing up as a, as a kid? Uh, any fire you looked up to as a growing up as a kid? Um, it was Mayweather. Mayweather. Um, he was the one who I was looking up to as a young lad. Um, I saw all his um, all his cars, his watches, and. His fame, how he lives, luxury was, and um, and we said I always dreamed of having all that. And as you get older, um, you realise it's not really all about that because you, you see your dreams and stuff like that. Then you want to be a world champion, you want to be a multiple world champion, then you want to be a multiple, multiple world champion in multiple different weight classes. Then so, um, but now it's Canelo. Canelo's the man. Yeah. But being being even even we've always been a massive fan of Canelo. Um, so I'd have Canelo and Mayweather as in top two who we always used to look up to and when those two fought I was like there was no or I hope he wins or I hope he wins it was just like I want to see who the winner is do you know what I mean see how do you win as well so it, it was um, I didn't really like that, that at that time in fairness <laughs> yeah two legends in a game absolute fantastic careers uh, it was Canelo at football for me pound for pound Number one in the world at the moment. It's absolutely phenomenal fighter. So, yeah, there's two uh, fantastic fighters to look up to. Uh, I want to ask you, though, uh, obviously, let's talk a bit about it, your, the division you're in. Super lightweight. Uh, you're ranked number two in Ireland. Uh, you've got lacks of, you're going to have domestic fights, potentially maybe down the line against uh, Stephen McKenna, uh, Ryan Rook. Uh, if you could pick a domestic fight against one of those two going forward in the future, who would it be against? I don't know, affairs. I don't know. Um, wherever which one is the best pathway to take, that's what really, isn't it? It's all about making smart moves at the right time, and um, we're um, we're leading into the better right direction. Really, two fantastic fights either way. When it, I'm sure they will happen one day. Obviously, you, your records are similar. Uh, both keep on winning. I'm sure one day you, your paths will meet. Uh, obviously, being the same division, weight weight class as well. That fight will probably do do very good numbers in in Ireland. Yeah, I've, I, I think the last one, I sparred Steve and Stevie one time um, a couple of years back. I, we are actually both amateur still. Um, he was on the hook forms. I think he was going a broad fighting. Um, I sparred Ryan there um, not so long ago. Um, I think it would be like four or, five minutes, four or five months ago. Two of them, two of them are tremendous. Two of them are tremendous uh, fighters. Really good fighters. I love the respect there for the two fires there. I want to I wanna ask you, Pierce, obviously, you, you signed with MTA Global. Uh, how does it feel to be signed by such a big uh, promotion, obviously, back in you in your career? How does it feel to be signed by MTA Global? Yeah, it's... MTK have done tremendous for me so far. That's really keeping me active during the pandemic and getting me, get me the fights. Um, you look at most people, they be, they be stuck in one position for a, a period of time, like a long period of time, so... Um, it's it's been great. Um, forever grateful, yeah. Let's let's talk about it because obviously they've been putting on some fantastic shows during the pandemic. I've been a fan of their shows. I look forward to the end of every week, every Friday night, or every other Friday night. They're putting on some fantastic shows. So obviously, how does it feel to be part of these shows? Obviously, there's been so many great shows. There's been a lot of uh, title fights, a lot of a lot of uh, European title fights, a lot of uh, English title fights. How does it feel to be? Uh, fighting on these shows, or even through the pandemic, and now with uh, fans coming back into stadiums. Yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Um, the fights have been tremendous. Like literally, everyone's been chilling in. Um, they've been cracking some good, great numbers, some viewers. So, for me to be on those cars, it's great exposure. And if I'm all, if I'm keep doing, if all I'm doing is winning, keep keep making statements every fight, and then I keep knocking at the door. The doors will soon open. Obviously, let's talk a bit about a, a massive fight that's only coming up on in, in Belfast or uh, MTA Global and top rank. You've got uh, Mickey Conlon going to be fighting Belfast on August, I think August the 6th. 
Would you, if you got opportunity come for you to go and fight on that card, so would, would you take the opportunity? At the minute, no, because it's I've been been away for so long in camp for three months, and now it's all about downtime, family wise. Um, and so it's only about three, three, four weeks away. So it means I'll have to go back to camp now t- tomorrow if I want to go on that card, um, or even tonight just to set up for tomorrow. But yeah, now it is what it is. Um, some great fights in it. Some lads from Belfast who never got out during the pandemic who deserve to grow um, on that card. It's a great card to be coming back on, out on the fans being there, especially in your home, your home county. So um, everyone needs to share the point. So um, no point being greedy looking for every fight. <laughs> I want to talk a bit, obviously, about uh, I think one of your stable mates and the guys fought, fought on the same undercard as you last weekend. Is, uh, Jordan Reynolds. Uh, how good is this guy? Obviously, another fantastic win, second second win of his career. Uh, how good is this guy? Yeah, Jordan's been really good. Jordan's been trying sort of hard. Um, but me and Jordan being in camp together, been pushing each other really hard. Obviously, he 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 actually made the transition to move to Ireland, and then he moved back to his hometown in London. And since his fourth fight, we. He always he, he has always been good and always had the talent there. But you just see he's adapting to the pro game now a lot a lot better. Where everything's all slowing down now and he, and he sees shots and I, I'm actually realizing uh, he's realizing himself that he has power because he stuck his pounding down in the first round. And uh, that's because he's slowing things down and picking the shots at the right time. And he, he he's developing really good, yeah. And he's general with all of us in the Ibox gym. It's everyone loves him, he's a character. He's always, he's a good band, he's a good band to be around. And um, yeah, he puts a smile in everyone's face. Even if you're going, if you're feeling a bit down, he, he throw your hand on your shoulders or something like that, give you a little bit of a shake up and tell you everything's good and just keep trying away. Yeah, he's a, he's a character, he's a funny guy, uh, a yeah. public guy, as always. He's a really, he's a real good gentleman. That's exactly what he is. Yeah, top, top man, top man he is. Uh, I want to obviously I want to ask you a bit about let's talk a bit more <laughs> about the lightweight division and uh, potential fights that you could have on a domestic front and and the world front. Obviously, we're going to talk a bit about some British fighters, some new fighters in the UK, uh, the likes of O'Hara Davis, Jack Carroll, Sam Maxwell, K. Prosper, N.S. Brown, Dalton Smith, uh, Robbie Davis Jr., Harlem Eubank, Lewis Ritson. There's so many great fighters out there. If you could potentially would you like to be involved in one of these names uh, going forward in your career in some big, big fights? Yeah, of course. That like be the best, you've got to beat the best and get the recognition that you deserve when you're up there at that, that kind of that kind of level. You know? Like those fighters there, most of them are at British, European and world war level. So each or not like you gotta take each fighter as as it comes and see where it leads you then. But um, yeah, of course. Why not? Um, yeah, yeah. So I really look forward. To it. Let's just see how it goes. Yeah, some cracking fights, some cracking. It's a cracking division. Some really, really good fighters out there, and obviously, it's it's, it's very it's something to look forward to. Very exciting times for British boxing fans. Yeah, um, but it's a it's a pity that we can't we, we can't fight for the British title. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sure. Most I'm hard, sure. most most fights probably there that you mentioned probably won't happen. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. Like I said, like it's not just a British title. You can move on and fight for European and and I'm and going for world on this. I'm sure you're going to do that sometime in the future. Hopefully, please God, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Wanna, yeah, fingers crossed. I want to ask you, obviously, if you could, let's talk about world, world titles. If you could maybe fight for world title in a, a in an iconic place or iconic venue, what would it be? Um, I actually only said this the other day uh, to an interview guy. Um, it'd be Crow Park. Um, Muhammad Ali fought there. Um, no other boxer I ever did. It's right, right around the corner for me. I'm actually seeing it out the window. Yeah, it's I hold like two thousand, eighty two thousand people. So tremendous. I feel that it was unbelievable. It's a dream come true that day. Proper. I'm sure it will come true. I'm sure it will one day. Just keep on winning, uh, climbing the ladder, climbing the rankings. I'm yeah. sure you'll, you'll one day get your get your shot at a world title and, and maybe get to defend it, win it and defend it in, in, in Ireland. 
100%, 100%, we do. I want to talk a bit about, obviously, uh, obviously the super lightweight division, uh, what's happened recently. Uh, did you watch the fight between Jose Maria's and Josh Taylor? What did you f- think of Josh Taylor's performance capturing the undisputed uh, titles? To be honest, I actually put, um, I spoke to Andrew McCartan about this as well, where he said, I thought Jose Maria's Mar- 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 was going to beat him. And um, it was going to be pretty much not just beaten, but give him a bad beating. And he proved me wrong. Josh Taylor proved me wrong. And I'm actually, from that, I'm a massive, massive fan of Josh Taylor. I'm a massive fan of him. And I hope he goes on. I hope he unifies the division again. And then goes up to 147, then avoids uh, um, the likes of Terrence Crawford, Earl Spence, Manny Pacquiao, stuff like that. People like that who he deserves to fight. He, needs, he deserves to fight big names because um, he's proved everything. Yeah, he's a, he's a super champion, absolutely fantastic fire. He'll get in there with anyone. Uh, I, I, I've got nothing but admiration for him. He's an absolutely terrific fire. And going over there to win those, win those belts, it's never, it's never easy. And never. to make history, fantastic. Even, I think styles make fights and certain, certain fighters, with his style, he looks, he looks average. But then he he'd get into another another guy and he he looks unbelievable. He looks superb. It's uh, his style, his style is very basic, but it's effective and it's a hundred percent. Like it's just ah, oh, I'm just a big massive fan of him, and that's all I can say. Obviously, he's he's probably more likely going to fight maybe Jack Catterall next. Uh, obviously, defending these belts. Uh, how 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 highly do you rate Jack Catterall, and can you see him uh, causing uh, Josh problems on the night? Um, I, I, really, I do rate right, um, Jack Hatchell. He's really good. Um, I don't know whether this this could be this could cause him from not being active this fight. You know, like jumping back into a big fight like this and not being active for so long. Um, so possibility, yeah. I think Josh Taylor will win. Yeah, it's a crack and fight if it does does happen. Uh, what I say, when, when, when does that fight happen? Is that October or November? I'm not too sure they've got a date yet. Obviously. Uh, on previous interviews, they've, they've been going back and forth and stuff like that. So I'm not too sure they've got a date yet. Obviously, uh, obviously, I was talking a bit uh, that uh, Josh had a hand injury, so I'm not too sure if that, I'm not too sure if that's healed up uh, properly yet. But I'm sure, yeah. hopefully, that will happen sometime this year, maybe in Edinburgh as well. Hopefully, please God, hopefully, yeah. I'll definitely happen in Scotland. 100. percent Brilliant, brilliant. Obviously, I want to talk to you a bit about a fight I recently just fought last weekend. Uh, Javante Davis. I don't know if you watched his fight. How did you rate his performance? I did watch it. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was a tricky performance. As where he was a smaller guy at the one forty division. Um, what, what's the what's the guy he fought? Um, Mario Barrios. Mario Mario Barrios. Barrios. Yeah, Mario, yeah. Um, he was long. He was tall and long, So he gave um, Davis some problems early on, but. Um, Davis was stuck around him and it got approved that he carried his power up to 140 as well. So um, he is the tank that everyone says he is. Yeah, a terrific fighter. Obviously, some people have come out and criticised him today, saying that maybe he should be fighting the likes of uh, Devin Haney, uh, the likes of uh, T. Fomi Lopez, Lomachenko, and fighters like that. Do you believe he should be getting in there to, with these sort of fighters to, to secure his legacy? Um, yeah, but. Just them fighters on the green there with him. That's the thing. Like, this the other side of people don't see. People just just blame because he's been he's staying active for another fighter. Where if he if they if those um like the likes of Teofimo Lopez, Devin Henry and stuff like that, they're not gonna fight him. Why you hang around? You need to you need to put uh, field on the table for his daughter. You know, I'm, I'm a massive fan of, of um Javante Davis and he's up. I just I just think he's 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 he's, un, he's unreal. There's a, there's a few like him, like the stuff that he, the things where he done to Gamboa, Gamboa and stuff like that. He's, he's un, unreal. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think he gets as much respect he deserves. Obviously, yeah. uh, and that's just that's a shame to see him. Uh, like even some of the um, Leo Santa Cruz, like, come on, fantastic. Uh, like, and Fran Santa Cruz has been there with lots of Carl Frampton, and uh, he's got a distance with Carl Frampton on, on a, few, a few times now. So uh, for him to stop him in that sort of fashion. It's something sort of tremendous, really. And his promoter said that he'll only fight fighters on the BB on the PBC, Penny of Auction. So 
We'll see what we we'll see. We we'll see what happens. It's uh, it'll be hard to make uh, some negotiations for the fights of the um, likes of Teofino and Devin Henry because of the type of promoters and stuff like that and different managers. Yeah, of, of course. Obviously, promoters. It's a bit. They're allowed to. They're allowed to work with each other at the moment. It's a bit of uh, a back and forth between the promoters, which yeah. is a shame for British, British boxing fans and the uh, war boxing fans because we're not getting to see the fights that we all want and all deserve. But uh, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. I want to ask you, obviously, before I let you go, Pierce, I want to ask you, what's your short-term and long-term goals in boxing? Uh, short-term goals, um, short, to become a, become a title hold at some stage in the next couple of months, then go on to European level, um, and then the next two, two, three years, then go for world titles. And then keep carrying up then, unify as Josh did, and then move up the weight class and try to do that, do that as well. And after that, then move up the weight class. <laughs> well, hopefully, please God. You never know. You never know. Yes, I mean, anything's, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Exactly. Uh, possible. Yeah. You got a quick message for your fans before I let you go as well, Piss? I just appreciate it so much. Even over, the, even over the um the week, last week, like, so many texts that I couldn't even get back to. Um, but I made sure I go back to him during the week and uh, I just can't thank you all enough for what you've been for the support that you've given me and it's, it's tremendous and I'm really grateful for it Brilliant, brilliant Pierce, thanks for taking the time to join me today absolute pleasure and I'm sure we'll speak again soon Thanks very much, I really appreciate it Thank you very much mate, take care now, take care now.